You're watching UNICEF Television. On the eve of World AIDS Day, international experts gathered in New York to discuss the realities of achieving an AIDS-free generation, despite the financial challenges facing the global economy. Doing more with less suggests that when you're faced with an economic crisis and you have little to go on, that's when you become the most inventive, the most focused, the most efficient, and therefore the most effective. And that's what's needed right now. So I think it's, um, instead of thinking of the crisis as just a crisis, uh, it's a good moment in history to think about, well, we have limited resources, how do we best use them? And for children, um, you know, in particular, who are the most vulnerable and, the, and often the neediest, um, it's particularly important to figure out what do we know through evidence that works and that we should be spending the limited dollars on rather than, you know, trying to apply um, a, a vaguer approach, a more general approach. We have uh, sort of applied sometimes a cookie cutter approach to different countries that might have a different epidemiological picture of the epidemic. And what we've learned over the years is that that's not a good way to work. Um, and UNICEF has learned that lesson too, that we must be more targeted and that we must accept what the evidence shows us works. Well, what we're working for now at UNICEF is an AIDS-free generation. And UNICEF, in its focus in four areas for children, preventing mother-to-child transmission, preventing new infections in adolescents, treating the children that are living with HIV, and providing support for children affected by HIV is how we're trying to focus and take what uh, Gita said uh, I into, the, into the field. Today we release, along with WHO and UNAIDS, the annual progress report on scaling up prevention and treatment. An amazing progress has been made, particularly in the last decade. So for example, 400,000 children infected last year under the age of five. That's unacceptable, but it's a 30% drop than just five, six years ago. 23% of kids have access to treatment. That's still not enough, but it's still, but it is an increase. So what we're trying to do and what UNICEF, I think, has the capacity to do most effectively is to integrate those four areas. The first area of response is to ask, are we going to accept this as a decline? The environment has been created that suggests you re we really have no money, everyone has to tighten their belts, we, we really have to make sure that we cut budgets in every domain. But that, that's simply not true. The amount of money we're talking about is not that large. We're not talking about masses and masses of global funding which was poured into this. You know, there's this perception in, in the wealthy world that they really give huge percentages of their uh, government budgets off to other countries when really it's a small fraction. And to throw it into the same debate as we have to have these austerity measures is, is really disingenuous. You have to actually come back and focus and say how much money is this? Can we accept these cuts? Shouldn't we be fighting these cuts? I saw Jeffrey Sachs was writing uh, that it's one day of the U.S. military's expenditure to provide the funding for, for the global fund. You know, when, when banks in, in Wall Street just around the corner were looking like they were going to fail, they found the money too big to fail. But, you know, apparently children are too small to count. You've been watching UNICEF television. For more information, visit unicef.org. Unite for Children.